It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. On Tuesday night in Indiana's Republican primary, Donald Trump won all 51 delegates clinching the Republican nomination while driving Senator Ted Cruz and John Kasich out of the race. On the Democratic side, Bernie Sanders won the primary over Hillary Clinton with 43 delegates, giving his campaign the momentum to stay in the race. Let's take a look at what Trump and Sanders had to say upon their victory last night. All my life, I've been in competitions, different competitions, whether it's sports or business or now for 10 months politics. And I have to tell you that I have met some of the most incredible competitors that I have ever competed against right here on the Republican Party. You know, we started off with that 17 number. So again, I want to congratulate Ted Cruz. He is a tough, smart competitor. I want to thank my wife and my family. It's an incredible family. So we feel great about tonight, not only in winning here in Indiana and accumulating some more delegates, but also gaining the momentum we need to take us to the finish line. What is most important is that we do not allow someone like a Donald Trump to become president of the United States. And I think that according to every poll that I have seen in the last month, Bernie Sanders defeats Donald Trump in the national polls by greater margins than does Hillary Clinton, and Bernie Sanders beats uh, Donald Trump by greater margins than Hillary Clinton in battleground state after battleground state after battleground state. In other words, I think the objective evidence is that I am the strongest candidate to prevent the Trump from becoming president. According to every poll, Bernie Sanders has a greater chance of defeating Trump than Secretary Clinton in all battleground states. Joining us now to discuss this is Robert McChesney. He's the author, along with John Nichols, of the new book, People Get Ready, Fight Against Jobless Economy and Citizenless Democracy. So good to have you with us, Bob. My pleasure to be here. Bob, let me get your take on Indiana's uh, primary results on the Democratic side first. Yeah, well, I think this was the first race of the uh, primary season where I thought Bernie Sanders absolutely needed to win uh, to continue to have a, a roadmap to win the nomination. And I think it's for that reason, it was an extraordinary victory. Uh, you know, he came into this race with you know, the entirety of the corporate news media, NPR, completely written him out. The race was over. He was Hillary Clinton was the presumptive nominee. And it had a very great demoralizing effect upon Sanders supporters. Uh, the activism was down appreciably uh, in the last week or two. Uh, so this was really sort of the darkest moment for the campaign, its greatest test. And the fact that he came through and won, and, and won handily in Indiana, I think, and now the schedule for Sanders going forward looks very favorable. Uh, this was a decisive day for him. It was a crucial day, and it was an enormous victory. And I suspect, even though you've never sensed this at MSDNC or CNN or the New York Times or the Washington Post, I suspect inside of Hillary Clinton's uh, in her circles, there's a great deal of teeth gnashing going on right now. And uh, now Bernie Sanders is moving forward, and every poll, as I mentioned earlier, says that he has a greater chance of winning uh, the uh, presidency uh, against a Trump, Trump candidacy. What do you make of that? Well, I think it's for obvious reasons. This is not uh, an accident. Bernie Sanders is by far the most popular candidate, Republican or Democrat, with independent voters. Hillary Clinton's not popular with independent voters at all. And so when you have a general election and independent voters who are, or a plurality of all American voters, there are more independents than there are Republicans or Democrats, Bernie Sanders does really well. He wins against everyone. He has for months now. He does much better than Hillary Clinton. And that's why if you look at the primary season so far on the Democratic side, Hillary Clinton, basically, her wins have been sort of Potemkin village wins in a certain extent. They've either been in states with extraordinarily low voter turnout, like across the Deep South and in Ohio, where the turnout's like 40, 50 percent less than it was in 2008, the last time there was a competitive race. Or they've been in states that have been closed primaries, like Maryland, Pennsylvania, New York, where basically uh, people had to be Democrats. And in some states like New York, they literally had to change the registration six months 
prior to the primary. These are the states she's won. When there have been open primaries where people register the same day they could vote, when uh, independents could participate, Bernie Sanders has done really, really well. And this is sort of what he's looking at the rest of the primary season. And I think what we're seeing is Hillary Clinton's basic weakness as a candidate uh, being underlined again. She's just not that popular with voters. She scrabbles by in the Democratic side, but when it gets to a general election, she has a lot of core weaknesses some of which have yet to be fully exploited. Bernie Sanders, you know, has run a pretty, actually generous campaign toward her. He hasn't really touched some of the issues that Donald Trump and the super PACs that are lining up will have no difficulty, you know, driving a, a truck through those holes. Now, uh, what do you make of the Donald Trump victory in Indiana, largely a working class uh, state uh, with a lot of unions uh, in that state? Uh, how does Donald Trump uh, sealed his nomination with Indiana. Well, Donald Trump has been the dominant candidate in the Republican side the entire season, with only a few exceptions, uh, Wisconsin being one of them a month ago, and then a few of the deep south states or southwest states like Texas and Oklahoma and up in Minnesota. But aside from that, Trump has basically run the board and run the board mostly in landslide victories. So the Victory in Indiana should have been no surprise. I think he has a great deal of appeal for a variety of reasons. Uh, and that um, I w only would have been a shock had he lost yesterday. I think he is the presumptive nominee. He's been the most popular candidate. There's been a lot of speculation about why that is and his appeal. But I do think that for what we can say with some authority is that Trump is probably the most difficult candidate for any Democrat to beat, especially Hillary Clinton, because Ted Cruz, uh, even John Kasich, but Ted Cruz or Marco Rubio or one of the traditional Democrats probably was looking at the same electoral map that Mitt Romney or John McCain looked at, which meant basically they were going to win the southern states, they were going to win some of the interior western states, and then they'd have to fight and claw for North Carolina, for Florida as an outside chance, for Virginia, for Ohio, they'd have to win basically every close state to get to 270 in the Electoral College. It would have been probably almost impossible. Donald Trump sort of changes that. He'll win all the deep southern states. His racist stuff has locked that voting base in. He's going to win the southern states. He'll win the interior west states. He'll win the hardcore Republican states. But because he is very strong, at least rhetorically, in two areas where Hillary Clinton is extremely weak, he's going to have opportunities to go into a number of states in the North that Ted Cruz wouldn't have had a prayer in, that Mitt Romney had no hope in. Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, Iowa. These states are fair game because Ted, uh, Donald Trump is running against trade deals. He's running against runaway jobs. Hillary Clinton is you know, the champion of these corporate trade deals, these corporate giveaways. Donald Trump is running against money in politics and the corruption of the super PAC system and buying elections. Hillary Clinton is the champion of that system. Despite her rhetoric, she's gaming the system for herself. So she's especially weak at the areas where Trump can exploit because he's especially strong rhetorically and he can go in. And those are crucial working class votes and not just white voters, mind you. Uh, there's evidence talking to friends of mine in the labor movement that he will do better with black working class voters uh, than, than one might think with I'm running on those exact issues. And uh, finally, uh, Bob, what does this tell us about American social political understanding and Trump's character and his shady past? You know, this morning um, on Democracy Now!, they were talking about his association and perhaps affiliation with the mob in New Jersey. Now, there's so much about uh, Donald Trump uh, that is unconventional, to put it mildly. Um, how does a candidate like that succeed in this political climate in the United States of America? You know, it's not just Donald Trump that's getting horse manure coverage by the corporate news media and NPR. Uh, it's also Hillary Clinton. Uh, her record has not been examined either. So let's be clear about this. Hillary Clinton went on a corporate shakedown speaking to her, unprecedented in American history, in the two years after leaving the State Department and before formally announcing for a candidate, and put $21 million in her personal bank account, giving 90 talks to the largest corporations in America, all of whom knew she was about to run for president. Unprecedented in American history. 
And this has gotten virtually no attention. Just a couple of the Goldman Sachs talks, but then it's only talking about the transcripts. This is basically elementary journalism. It's only being done on the margins, by the intercept, by truth out, truth did. You see some stuff, but it's more or less off limits. And so both candidates basically are giving any serious coverage or analysis. And what this means is that it's reduced basically uh, Hillary Clinton will run a bunch of negative ads on her super PAC attacking Donald Trump for his record. Donald Trump will do the same thing to Hillary Clinton, and they're the ones who will raise these issues. But then each candidate can dismiss them, basically, as just political propaganda by their opponent. We don't have, have many journals actually covering these stories and getting into the hard digging. And that's something that's just a major loss. It's one of the reasons why both candidates have been so successful, because journalism in this country basically doesn't really exist. Bob, uh, we hope to unpack those stories and looking forward to having you back. Thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.